Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. Um, in the last few videos, we've been working on this uh, autometric jig bore and uh, doing some repairs on it. Um, it was in a little uh, tip over accident. Uh, so we fixed a few things on it. We fixed uh, uh, some hand wheels here, 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 and here. Um, and um, I recently got it uh, under power now. So I did some wiring and, uh, and got it connected up and uh, tested it out. It actually runs now. And uh, I'm looking forward to trying it out um, just to kind of refresh everybody's memory. Um, it has a horizontal uh, rotary table here, and uh, it's kind of configured like a lathe a little bit, but it's a jig bore. So it has a carriage that can move forward, and then a cross slide that can move across. And then the interesting part is this guy here runs the uh, rotary table up and down, and I'll bring the camera on to the other side so you guys can see that. Um, so. Uh, the other feature of this thing is it has um, another rotary table here, and I've loosened it up so you can see it. So it has another rotary table here. It's not powered, but it has the ability to turn all the way around. So, for example, you could use this like a boring mill uh, that had a, uh, an indexing table on it. So, say we wanted to bore a hole, say we wanted to bore this hole right here. So uh, we could bore this hole right here. Maybe this was a box and we wanted to bore um, a mating hole on the other side. So now we can, we can swing this guy around like this and bore a hole on the other side. Um, and so it has precision uh, adjustment this way. Um, this is more like your lathe carriage, so it's kind of a non-precision rack and pinion kind of thing. Uh, this guy's precision, uh, it reads out uh, with a vernier to tense. Uh, this reads out with a vernier to tense, and I'll zoom in on those, uh, those dials in a minute and so you can take a look at it. Uh, this guy here is a little, it's a little R8 spindle that came with it. Uh, it's missing the motor, and uh, so that you can have a powered spindle on the table and work in this direction now, too. Um, so it's kind of an interesting machine. So I've got the guards opened up here, and we're going to take a peek down inside, and you guys can get a look at it um, and um, see how this thing works. So Okay, so here's um, the rear of the machine opened up so you can see the drive system. And uh, this is the uh, this through hole to the spindle. Uh, and then it's got a belt reduction to this step pulley here. And then I don't know if we'll be able to see it. Yeah, you can see it down there. There's another step pulley on a, on a motor down there. Um, so when I, when I turn this crank here, uh, it moves the spindle up, the spindle assembly up and down on these, uh, on these guide rods here. Um, yeah. And then that Z-shaped lever down there, that's to, uh, to slacken the belts so that you can, uh, you can jump them up on the different pulleys. And now that's the, uh, um, the drive system for the rotary table, which we're going to see in just a second. Okay, so this is the uh, rotary table side of the, uh, of the main spindle here. Um, and this is powered. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on here for a sec. So that's a powered drive there. Um, you can also um, you can also engage uh, this guy. This is a tilting worm here, and this has a worm gear on it, just like a rotary table, so that you can engage this and then turn this. You can turn this lever, and then it has an index scale up here and degree markings all the way around. Now that hole right there that you see, that's a uh, number five Morse taper. And uh, so if you needed to put a tool in uh, uh, in this side here, you can put it in this Morse taper hole. So and let's just peek down in here. That's kind of the drive system there. And uh, back this guy up here. 
So when I turn this hand crank to traverse, uh, like you would in a, a lathe carriage, it drives a, uh, a pinion gear um, that's under here, and there's a pinion, or there's a rack here and a pinion here. Um, there's a worm gear there that we can just see there, and that's for the power feed. Um, and I've got the guards off of it right now so we can see in down in there. And this is the little R8 spindle here. Um, so that fits an R8 collet right there. And then, um, so this would be powered here. And to change the collet, uh, you'd have a spanner wrench um, to hold on to it so that you could slacken the, uh, uh, the draw bar. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the crossfeed dial here, um, and um, so this is would be like your uh, your lathe crossfeed here, and you can see here that we have a, a vernier scale, and then a movable uh, a movable ring here, so we can zero that anywhere we want. Now the really neat part, I think that's pretty cool, are these. Uh, this is a Veter root uh, counter here, so I can actually. Um, reset that to zero anywhere I want and then it's t uh, when is it uh, I forgot now so this first division is ten thousandths here so that's a hundred thousandths two hundred thousandths 250 right there so that's a quarter inch movement uh, but it also you know tracks inches too, right? Okay, that was an inch right there. Um, and uh, I believe this thing's got about over a foot of cross travel. So um, this is one of the hand wheels that I fixed on this guy here. Uh, this is the other one. This is the table traverse here. But I always, I thought these Vita root little counters were pretty cool. So it's kind of like a mechanical DRO. Um, and this has got a nice smooth action here. It's a nice... Uh, <clears throat> ground lead screw on that. All right, so this is the uh, um, the rotary table elevation here. Um, it's done by this wheel, and it's got another one of these Vita root um, counters on it. These nifty little counters here. I can zero that anywhere I want, basically. Um, and then it's got a. Uh, um, a graduated wheel here that I can reposition by loosening this screw and it has a tense vernier on it too. So theoretically I can move this in one tenth increments uh, uh, if I want. So and this is the other hand wheel. You can see some of the welding uh, that I did on this uh, to repair it. It didn't look too bad. Um, it's not bad for uh, chromed cast iron welding. All right, so these are the uh, uh, the power controls here for this. We have spindle, and then we have a feed motor here. Um, these got bent in the uh, in the accident, and I, I shot a couple of videos of me repairing these guys here. These are not stock. Um, somebody else put these on, and uh, they kind of stick out from the machine. I don't really like the looks of them, but they work, and uh, they're going to stay on it. So this spindle motor, forward and reverse. And then this is a feed motor here. Um, the feed mechanism is actually pretty interesting, and I'll show you a little bit more about that in just a minute here. But I'm going to turn it on for just a second. So you can hear the feed motor. It's got a separate motor for the feed, which is kind of interesting. And then it's got a very unique way of adjusting um, um, the feed rate. And we'll see that in just a second. And then this little lever down here, um, when you when the feed motor is running, uh, you engage this by lifting it up, and it's like a clutch, and it engages the uh, um, the traverse in this direction. So, so let me swivel around there a little bit. So um, we'll go ahead and uh, turn that feed motor on for a sec, and you can see the hand wheel moving there. Let's take that out. All right, so down here, what we have, what this is, is this is a little adjustment uh, for the feed rate. Um, and we turn this little 
this little knob here, and it's got a little readout here that doesn't seem to mean a heck of a lot. Um, and I'll show you why in a second. Uh, but when you adjust this, it um, uh, adjusts the feed rate um, from real fine to uh, actually uh, reasonably coarse. All right, so this is the uh, this is a variable speed drive, um, and this is what controls the feed rate on this particular machine. So when the feed motor is running, it's turning this thing here, and when we adjust our little uh, um, feed rate knob here, what it's doing is is it's a variable transmission. So I think they call it a ball variator is what I think it is. I'm not positive though. I haven't looked it up yet. Um, but basically, um, um, it as you turn this knob, you're kind of dynamically adjusting the uh, the feed rate. But the very interesting part is is when um, you crank it all the way down to almost zero, it will actually go to zero and then reverse direction. So. <laughs> It surprised me too, so uh, I thought I had the motor rotation wrong, uh, but the ball variator has two directions to it. So you can adjust the, uh, the feed rate and go fast, and, um, um, and, and, or crank it down and go slow, and then actually stop and go the other way. So let's, uh, let's see if I can demonstrate that, because it's kind of, I've never seen a machine like, let me move this off the stops here. Okay, so there it's running, and uh, I'll go ahead and engage the feed, and you can see that that's moving. That's moving, so I'm turning this knob and it's slowing down. It's almost stopped, and now it's at zero, and it's making a lot of noise. So, and then I'm going to keep turning this, and look at that, it's going, the, it's going the opposite way now, how do you like that, it's pretty bizarre, huh, I've never seen anything like that, and here we're coming back the other way, is that weird? It's the only machine I've ever seen anything like that. Uh, it caught my attention. I pulled the guards up because the thing was making so much noise, and uh, I think it's normal. It was a little low on oil, so I put some oil in it and uh, and tried it. But uh, it's kind of a it's kind of a noisy drive uh, for such a precision machine. All right, so right now I'm I'm gonna uh, engage this uh, worm and then drive the table. So we do that over here. All right, that's engaged. So now when I turn this, uh, this knob, this hand wheel, I can actually drive the table uh, uh, as a rotary table uh, in a controlled condition. So now I wanna make sure that I, uh, I disengage that because it's actually, back driving the motor right now, um, which is kind of interesting. There's no um, uh, disengaging clutch or anything like that to uh, uh, take the motor out of the drivetrain there. So I want to make sure that I, uh, that I take that out. So that's back on the motor there, like so. Quite, quite an interesting machine. Never seen anything quite like it. Okay, so that's a uh, short video of uh, the repaired uh, Kearney and Trekker automatic, autometric jig bore. Um, we showed the, uh, the rotary table feature, the cross slide, the apron, and uh, the main drive here. 
So what I'm thinking for this thing um, to make it useful for me is uh, I want to be able to mount a tool in here. Um, this is a little bit longer term project to find a nice motor for this. Uh, what I'm thinking is a, uh, a small half or three quarter horse uh, variable frequency drive uh, with a gear reduction to this so that I can just dial the speed in here uh, directly and use the R8, uh, this R8 spindle here. Um, so what that would allow me to do is mount stuff on here, uh, drill holes, um, mill circular grooves, um, and a bunch of different things. I can do uh, angular indexing, things like that. Um, so, and then with that removed, what I'd like to be able to do is mount work on this side, and it's got this nice, push this aside a little bit, somebody made this nice uh, heavy duty plate here with uh, half 13 tapped holes in it, so you can use it like a boring mill and just mount your, uh, your work on here and uh, with strap clamps and uh, uh, mill slots and uh, bore holes and uh, and then um, do uh, angular, uh, angular holes. Uh, or um, the more interesting part might be to do holes that are in line with each other very accurately, uh, like a box shaped thing, a transmission housing or, uh, uh, or something like that. So I think the first step is gonna be to be able to mount a tool in this, uh, in this Morse taper hole. So I got an idea for that. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is I've got a, uh, a uh, Morse taper to 5C adapter here, uh, which fits real nice in there. So now what I can do is I can put 5C pallets in here, like so, and so I can mount tools off of that now, um, you know, up to, say, one inch shank, uh, something like that. So imagine a boring head in this side, um, and, uh, or a drill or an end mill or something like that doing work over here. The other thing that I could do uh, that would be interesting is to mount a chuck on here. So then it would be like a little stubby lathe. Um, although I already got a lathe, so um, I don't think I'm gonna do that. Um, so what I need to do is I need to make a, uh, basically a collet closer for this custom collet closer for this machine. So that's going to be an upcoming project here uh, on YouTube and probably on the blog. Um, and uh, we'll document that, uh, that building procedure for that collet closer for this thing. So, and then uh, hopefully we'll get some tools mounted in there. We'll poke some holes in something or mill some slots, uh, do something like that. Um, anyway, that's about it for this right now. Uh, I think I'm going to button it back up and uh, do a little sketching and uh, figure out how I'm going to uh, make this uh, uh, this draw bar, or this collet closer uh, uh, for this machine. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. It's Tom, Ox Tools.